Good morning, everybody. My name is Evan, and today I'm going to be working on this old bank barn trying to get electricity hooked up into it. So previously, I've trenched in electricity from the front of the property where our meter base is and got electric wire over here to this barn. So today I'm going to try to actually get that wiring hooked up, get an electrical box installed, try to get some, uh, some outlets, some lighting on the inside, and some lighting on the outside of the barn. So this old bank barn actually had electricity at some point in time in its life. So it used to have electric that used to come in right about there. And it was fed with an aerial electric cable. So they had a cable that came across here. It bounced somewhere over here to an electric pole. Then to, there was an old house back here. Then over back across the street to the grain bins. And then back across some poles back to the meter base. So it was quite a string of cable that was back here. All those structures have been torn down. The grain bins are gone. The house is gone. All that's gone. There's, there's no aerial feed out here no more. But when we bought the place, it never worked out here anyway. So part of that was broken or didn't work or wasn't hooked up. But there was never been electricity out here since we've owned this, this property. But today we'll get it hooked back up and we, we're going underground instead of aerial. And um, so there is an old breaker box on the other side of this wall. It's actually an old fuse box and it's all rusty. It looks terrible. And we're going to tear that old fuse box out. We're going to put in our new breaker box inside of here. Uh, and then we're going to try to get some lighting and stuff hooked up. So there is some original wiring in here, some original lighting. Uh, I'm going to guess that most of that is probably pretty bad shape. Uh, we'll just have to assess it. We may be able to use some of it, but I'm going to have a guess that I'm going to end up replacing all the existing wiring in this old barn and replace it with new. So I'm going to go ahead and get in the lower level here and we'll start uh, getting our breaker panel installed, tearing out this old fuse panel. So this is the old fuse box that's located here in the, in the barn. You can see it's all completely rusted. The whole bottom is kind of uh, rotted out and uh, it's, it's really in pretty nasty shape. Um, a lot of this wiring that you see coming in here doesn't appear to have a ground wire. So it's just an old two wire uh, electrical instead of uh, usually you have two wires plus a ground. So most of this old wire I won't be able to use. I want to replace it with wiring that has a ground wire. But we're going to take this uh, electrical box off the wall. We're going to put a new electrical box somewhere in this area where it's more um, lower, a little bit lower so it's easier to get to. So I just got done uh, wiring up the, uh, the main power feed from our breaker box here near our meter base all the way out to the barn. And if you noticed, I have a little uh, junction box at each end. And the reason that being is because this box ends up being about 350 feet from the other box. And that was such a long run, we had to upsize our wire uh, so that we didn't lose too much voltage over that long run all the way down to the barn down there so we ended up trenching in two aught wire well two aught wire is too big to fit on the breaker that we're using we're actually only feeding 60 amps out to that barn but due to the distance we had to upsize the wire 
all the way up to two aught aluminum to feed uh, 60 amps without having any uh, loss in voltage or any big loss in voltage. But this breaker won't accept two aught wire. So what we're doing is we're going to we reduced we have to reduce our wire size to land on the breaker. So what we're doing in here is we're making a splice and we're going from our two aught wire and we're making a reducing splice down to four aught wire and that's what's going to go in and land that's what's landing on our breaker. So this reducing splice it's all covered in electrical tape it has several wraps of electrical tape on here so there's no uh, electrical conductors showing and it can't short against each other and uh, basically it looks like this this is a smaller version but it's um, basically a little terminal block that allows you to put one wire on one side and one on the other and you can uh, there's a quite a bit of wire size range that this can take so you can put a big wire on one side put a small wire on the other and that's what we're using here and then we've just covered that with electrical tape but uh, that's what we get, that's the reason for these little junction boxes on the side is just, we're just reducing the wire back down to the proper size to land on our breaker Well, today I finally got the electricity done at the barn. I've been working on this for like three weekends, and I think I pretty much finally got it done. You can see I've got a dust till dawn light over here on the side of the barnyard where the animals go in and in and out, and it and it kind of lights up the barnyard area. I've got a total of three dust till dawn lights on this barn, and uh, it kind of helps light up the area around the barn. I'm hoping that kind of keeps some of the animals and, and predators away. You can see I've got a dust till dawn light here in the front where the driveway kind of goes by. And then I've also got one over here on this far side over here. Um, this one right here, I didn't, wasn't for sure whether I really wanted that or not. So it is on a light switch and I will be able to turn that off if I don't want to use that light. But uh, three dust till dawn lights, so three sides can be lit up on this barn. So on the upper side of this barn, I did put, uh, got all the lighting installed here in the, the top side of the barn. And here, here's a good look of the inside of the barn. So I just used these, um, these are just single light bulb lamp holders, basically. I've got a total of nine of these uh, lights here in the barn so I think that even though there's only nine light bulbs in here in this big barn it is lighting everything up fairly good you can see all the stuff that's in this barn this barn is a complete mess this is like the boneyard here on the farm this is where we store all our materials and everything we build from so we've got a ton of material in here and now I can finally see that you can see we've got some of our straw and hay stored up here as well Eventually, this will be where we store all our hay. I'm hoping to make some kind of storage racks to get all this material stored off to the side and then use most of this, um, this little floor up here and use most of that for hay in the future. 
but uh, I, everything looks good. I do have, right now I've only got one light, uh, one outlet up here. Uh, I'll pro I will be adding more, but at least I've got one outlet up here for now. So I can plug in um, any tools or anything that I want to use. And in the winter time, I'll be able to keep a tractor because we park a tractor right here. And we'll be able to keep the battery charged and everything through the winter uh, using that outlet. But I do plan on adding more outlets, probably several outlets on this floor uh, later on. But uh, pretty happy with the way everything's turned out so far. I think most people would be interested in, in the livestock area, the lower level of the barn where I've wired up uh, for the chickens and the livestock stalls and all that stuff. So let's head down there. I'll show you. Uh, what we ended up doing for electricity down here So we continued with just the regular lamp holders down here. I ended up putting lights in this barn every third Joist and I ended up with 16 lights down here. I've got 16 down here I've only got nine upstairs and the ups this downstairs down here is super lit up now these lights are all LED so they're made of plastic, so I don't have to worry about broken glass or anything if one of them gets broken. And they should last a long time and use very little energy. But these are all just LED bulbs, and it's doing a great job of just lighting this whole downstairs area you know, very well. You can see I don't even have any lights down the center, but uh, it's very well lit up. I did put these on a three-way switch, so there is a switch at this doorway and there's a switch at that doorway. So if we ever get this door fixed down there, we'll be able to turn the lights off from me, on and off from either side. So we did add outlets down here for the animal stalls, specifically um, for heated waters in the wintertime. So you can see that we've got an outlet in the corner of the stall here, right above the corner of the stall. And the reason that being is right down here, that is a heated water bucket. And that's what the animals are drinking out of. So that cord on that bucket will come up here and reach this outlet and plug it in so I can plug that in in the winter time and that'll keep that bucket thawed so that they have water in the winter time and I did that on the next stall as well I've just got an outlet here so if we have a heated water bucket in there we'll be able to just plug it in that's kind of what I'm thinking most of our animals will just get a heated water bucket if I put a trough in there with a with a water heater uh, for the trough that will be able to do the same thing and just plug in So let me check let me take you into the chickens show you what we did in here So chickens uh, we normally uh, use a heated uh, water bucket for them as well actually um, Just find that it's simple or a heated water bowl like a dog water bowl So we've got an outlet here. It's a little bit lower than the livestock stalls, but this is just chickens in here and um, come over here. So this is a heated water bucket right there. And it will reach over there and plug into that outlet. And uh, that's how we plan on keeping water thawed for the animals, or for the chickens. A uh, hanging bucket like this will not th stay thawed out. That'll have to go away in the winter time. <laughs> I'm gonna trip. So I put another outlet on the other side as well. You can see I've got an outlet in this corner as well. And then I was thinking I could put another heated water bowl or hot water bucket on this side. And then the chickens should have plenty of water in the wintertime. Now, the lighting in the chicken coop, people do some different things with lighting. This light and then this light, is the they're on the light switch. But this third light right here, I've wired this one up just a little bit different so that you have a little bit of options. So it's actually, I don't know if you can tell, it actually has like an extension cord on it. And it comes over and I've got a plug-in right here above the door with a timer and it's just plugged into this timer right here so that one light bulb in this chicken coop will come on at, at six o'clock um, and I can adjust that so you know it'll come on before dusk it'll kind of help encourage the chickens to come into the chicken coop and then it will stay on right now till 8.15. So it'll stay on till after I get the, the goats and the chickens locked up. So basically, um, I'll get everybody locked up. I'll turn off the main lights. And this one light will stay on for a few minutes. And, and uh, then turn off at 
and uh, that'll give the chickens and everybody plenty of time to uh, get adjusted and and uh, keep the lights on a little bit longer. People do that in the winter time to try to keep them egg laying. Um, I don't have to use this. I can unplug it and not do that at all. But this just gives me options where I can put at least one light in the chicken coop on a timer if I do want to keep the uh, the chickens lit up a little bit longer, help encourage a little bit of egg production. Plus, I think it, the light itself actually encourages the chickens to come into the coop at night. Since I have a dust till dawn light outside, it'll help encourage them to come in here rather than stay outside with that dust till dawn light. But uh, that's pretty much my thought process and how we wired this whole this whole barn up. I don't I don't know uh, what other people do. So if anybody else has any other ideas or if they do anything differently, just let me know. I'd be interesting in uh, hearing what other people do in a livestock barn. This is something that you don't find out there very much on how to wire a livestock barn. You know, because it's specific to um the animals you have and and what kind of equipment you have so uh, i think i got everything set up the way i want to and uh if you guys do anything differently let me know in the comments below i'd be very interested so super happy that i've got i've got electricity in the barn now um and uh, i've got water in the barnyard so two big things i was wanting to achieve this year and uh, we've got that done now so we still will do uh, more projects down here in the barn. We're gonna we're gonna build another livestock stall here. It's gonna be a multi-purpose stall. We're gonna make an open area here, uh, probably with some hay feeders, and we're gonna close off that back area. Uh, so that's where we're gonna store food, keep the animals out of that side. So we still have some more stuff to do down here. It's gonna be a lot easier to do it now that I actually have power out here. Um, so that's it, guys. Uh, Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.